Praise God. Welcome to our Wednesday night service at my father's house. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us over the internet. I'm going to go ahead and uh, receive the offering. I want to share the offering scripture with you, which is also a part of our message tonight. And this is found in Deuteronomy 28.2. Deuteronomy 28.2. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord your God giveth thee. Deuteronomy 28, 8. God commands the blessing and this is for the obedient and we're going to talk about that tonight but this is part of the blessing of obedience to god hallelujah lord we thank you for your word that your word oh god is the first and the last word concerning anything that concerns us lord god who follow your command we receive your goodness and your blessing over everything and every other voice and situation. In Jesus' name, amen. We have the offering basket up here, those who are here who want to give tonight right now. For those of you watching over the internet, um, you can go ahead and go to mfhlb.com. I'm sorry if you're on Facebook, you can go to mfhlb.com. There's a Donate Now button. And on Facebook, there's a Shop Now button. And we're also on YouTube. So... Praise God, what a blessing for us to be there. Um, thinking of that, this Friday, if you check out our live lunches, if anybody checks those out, they're at 12, 10 p.m. Monday through Friday, you can go ahead and have something to say about this coming Friday's live lunch because it'll be our 100th live lunch, 100 um, episodes of live lunch, and we'll be sharing whatever that has done for you, the live lunch has done for you. And maybe somebody shared it with you, but you can check those out on the website, YouTube, and at my father's house, Las Vegas. They're a lot of fun, and they're only about 15 minutes long. Praise God. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouses, and in all you set your hand unto. Isn't that an awesome promise? Something called commanding the blessing upon where you store your stuff and whatever you put your hand to, and blessing you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. So this is called, Whose Command Will You Believe? There's an awesome song that said, Whose Report Will You Believe? And that's kind of the inspiration for this. Whose Command Will You Believe? There's lots of commands going on out there. There's lots of authority speaking commands. But whose command will you believe? As the song says, I will believe the report of the Lord. Let me tell you how special Wednesday night is to me. I was in a Wednesday night service. There was about yay amount of people present. And God gave a command through his word and broke something I've been dealing with for years. It was busted, broken, and a principality and power had to bow the knee. And it has been broken ever since. It was very personal to me. It was a word that came forth from Pastor Jose. And I'm not going to preach on it, but basically, a song came out of it from that word and that message. So I pray that a song would come into your heart this night for you and for you watching. I pray the song of the Lord would come into your heart the melody of the Lord God, that every other command has to bow to that command. Praise God. It was in a Wednesday night service like this some years ago that the Lord gave a command concerning Pastor David Wilcox and said to him while he was job seeking that the Lord would open up a job for him. And that job has held him for how long now? 
23 years. <laughs> I didn't realize that was that long ago. <laughs> so when the Lord commands something, every other knee has to bow. Every other command has to get in line. Praise God. So this is Psalm 42, 8. Now before Psalm 42, 8, there is a verse in verse 6, and it goes like this. And you may be here tonight. So it said it a couple of times in this psalm, maybe even three times in this psalm, but I'm just going to pick on verse 6. And I'm sorry you don't have verse 6 on your papers and you didn't know about this and those of you who are um, watching on the internet. But it, it starts like this, and this may be where you're at tonight. Oh my God, <laughs> my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and from and of the Hermonites and from the hill Mizar. Now, when you look that up, it references another verse. The land of the Hermonites, the hill Mizar, um, the land of Jordan, the Hermonites, the hill Mizar. His soul is cast down. Things are not going well. He is very troubled, the psalmist. And that may be where you're at tonight. But he knew of something that happened in this land. And this is the reference. There's several references to this, but I'm going to read one. Psalm 133.3. Psalm 133.3. Remember, he had said, this is the land of Jordan, of the Hermonites from the hill Mizar. Well, what happened in that place? Psalm 133.3 says, as the dew of Hermon, from the Hermonites, we're reading in Psalm 42.6, as the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. He was remembering that God, his God, had commanded the blessing. So his soul may be cast down, but God, his God, can you say God is my God? commands the blessing. See, God is, <laughs> he's in command. He can command the blessing. He knew that. And that's where we start with verse 42.8 that's on your paper and given to the uh, screen. Yet the Lord, and here's where we start. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. So no matter what's going on, God has said he will command his loving kindness in the daytime. So I don't know what's happened to you today, but God has sent forth a command today. In the daytime, there is a command. There might be lots of voices out there. There might be lots of commands out there. There are lots of voices in the room. But it's such a relief to find Jesus in the middle of this crowded room. I remember the song that was from Benny Hester. It is such a relief to find Jesus in the middle of this crowded room. The world is crowded with lots of noise. Our day is crowded with lots of commands. But there's a command from the Lord this day. And it's the command of his loving kindness. He has commanded it and it's there for us today. Once again, it's a command. I wanted to say a little bit about this, and I'm just asking the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me. There's so much to say here. But I'm going to go ahead and go with this slow. And in the night, his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. So in the daytime, there may have been trouble, but there was a command from God of loving kindness given over this day. And in the night, and that means when things turn dark, when things seem to turn to a darker period, there is a song that shall be with me. Say that, please, with me. This song, say song, shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. Because that song hits us, hear me, 
because that song hits us, a prayer comes out of us. We don't just pray. God inspires us to pray. The Bible says that he draws us. We don't draw ourselves to God. God so loved that he gave, and he inspires and draws out of us a song. We have to make up the song. It's his song, and it shall be with me, like we just said, right? Didn't we all just say that? We just made a command. Do you know that? You just said, in the night his song shall be with me. You just made a command. Now, who are you copying to make a command? Your commander. If he can command and you're obedient to his command, you can command. Praise God. See, the Lord commands his loving kindness in the daytime. And we're obedient to him. We want that, that command of loving kindness. Don't anybody not want loving kindness? It's a good thing, right? His loving kindness is better than life. In the night, his song shall be with me. We're responding just like our master, just like our Lord. We're starting co to command also. When in this prayer, he's saying, this song will be with me. And then a prayer comes out of me to the God of my life. Praise God. My prayer my response. God gives a verse, and then we have a chorus. God gives his word, and then we repeat it back to him. God says, I love you, and we say what? I love you. And this beautiful thing happens that's called faith, that's called hope, and that brings the song of the Lord and a principality and a power gets demolished. I said oppression gets dealt with. A lack of a job gets met. A circumstance that seems to have been that way for years and will always be this way, and it was this way in my, in my household, and it's been this way in my family, gets crushed because of the command and song of the Lord. I'm not just talking. I've experienced this. That's why I said I love Wednesday night because that command came to me on a Wednesday night. And by the way, we've experienced the freedom ever since. That command came to Pastor David on a Wednesday night 23 years ago. What was it a command of? The blessing of the Lord. Praise God. Did you need that command at that time? Oh, yes. Do you need that command? Praise God. And my prayer unto the God of my life. That word life, as we shared last Sunday, means this. Not the God of me breathing in and out and existing. It's the God of your life, meaning this, reviving from sickness. Reviving from, from discouragement. Or even death. Health, prosperity, and vitality. Now that's life, right? Those are the, the wonderful things of life. That's how life is meant to be experienced. So this is the God of my life, or the God of my prosperity, the God of my health, the God of my vitality, the God of my reviving from sickness, discouragement, or death. Now, how is this possible? Well, it's in the Word. Yet the Lord will command. Now, who among us actually has obeyed all of the Lord's commands? Jesus, <laughs> we know we have not done that. But Jesus obeyed every single one of his father's commands, even to the point of dying on the cross for us. We were not worthy, but the one who had not done anything wrong obeyed his dad's commands. And he loved us too. The Bible talks about he loved the sons and daughters and the children of men. He loved, and he loves people. So Jesus has obeyed the command of God and the commands. So even though we haven't, we know who has. 
And when the Bible says the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, well, he, he, we can't necessarily say he, we definitely haven't obeyed all of God's commands, but Jesus has. And I hope you catch this. He is the loving kindness of the Lord. He is the loving kindness that God has commanded. He is always obedient to his Father. So when the Lord says he'll command his loving kindness, who else would he command? But the one who has always obeyed his Father. Jesus is the loving kindness of the Father to us. In verse chapter 5, Hebrews 5, verse 8, though he were a son, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. So he learned obedience. The word obedience here means to hearken to a command. He had to learn how to do that. Even though he was perfect, he had to learn how to hearken to his father's commands. Hebrews 5 verse 9 says, And being made perfect, wasn't he already perfect? But the Bible says being made perfect. He was already holy, but was he perfect? He had to obey his father's commands. And there were still more commands to come for Jesus. Because it he, he obeyed, but yet he had to fulfill it, right? He had to actually do it. He actually had to lay down his life for us. Praise God. So that took obedience, right? Now I want you to think about, go ahead and look at me for a second. Is there a future for you? Is there stuff ahead for you? So there's stuff for you to obey as far as God's commands coming up, huh? What if there was not a future? What if God had said, that's it, I'm done? <laughs> you know, the future is not coming. You know, there was a place like that that happened where there was a future that God had written for us as if all our lives tomorrow, the tomorrow we think about, we hope for, Joe hopes for his tomorrow, his ship to come in, as I've heard it come out of his mouth. <laughs> Who's in charge of all that stuff? God is. You know, there was a time when that future was not a certain thing. We're going to get to that here. Being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation and unto all them that obey him. Jesus was made perfect by obeying, by fulfilling. Not just, he had to do it. He had to lay down his life. He actually had to do it. Was it tough? We know because of the prayers in the garden how, how, how tough it was. But not my will, but yours be done came out of his mouth. And he obeyed. And because he did that, he was made perfect. And he became the trainer, perfecter, and teacher of all those that obey him. All those that learn to obey like Jesus obeyed because he's teaching us how to obey. Praise God. I'm going to jump down to verse Re Revelations 5, 2 through 5. I want to talk about that part about there was a time when the future was not certain. Praise God. So this is... Um, Revelation chapter 5, verse 2. This is when it was not certain for everybody, whether you were an angel in heaven or whether you were on earth. And this is where Jesus made our futures possible. Praise God. Revelations 5, 2. And I saw a strong angel. Say, strong angel. What does that look like? What comes to your mind? A strong angel. What do you see? Big? Okay, bigger than other angels, right? Anything else you see? Muscles. I see muscles. <laughs> he was a strong angel, and this is what he's doing in heaven. Catch this. Think about this. I saw a strong angel 
proclaiming with a loud voice. What's he doing, this strong angel? He's loud. He's loud in heaven. Look what he's doing. This is what he's saying. I'll try not to get loud, but I'm trying to emphasize what he's doing. Who is worthy to open the book? Because there's a book. It's the book of our future. It's the book of the future of the planet. It was not certain. Christopher Columbus discovering America was not a certain thing. <laughs> it was in the book of God, a scroll in his hand. It was sealed with seven seals. And there's this angel that is strong. And he's proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book? To loosen the seals of it. Where is he saying and proclaiming all this stuff? In heaven, right? Look at him. Verse 3, and no man in heaven. I can just see him going around heaven, coming up to the animals, other angels. Think of whatever you know is in heaven. And there's this strong angel almost saying like, I dare you to do something about this. You know what I'm saying? Who's worthy here? And the Bible says that no man in heaven or in earth so he's looking at the earth. Neither under the earth. So he went under the earth. I think that's hell. I don't know. <laughs> Who's worthy here? And he's just going all around everything we've ever heard of and yelling out in his strength and in his power, Who? Neither under the earth was able to open the book and to look on it. I would love to be able to move all over this place and, and demonstrate this, because that's, that's how I see it in my heart, in my mind. And I wept much, verse 4, because there was no man found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon, because nobody obeyed. Nobody could be the one that, was, that received every command. Nobody was worthy. Nobody measured up. And you could just see him boasting about it. And, and, and I love it because we all know that Jesus obeyed. And I love it because he's saying, there is nobody else, is there? You could just see him boasting. It's not here. It's not in hell. It's not on the earth. You know nobody's got to do you. It was a setup. It was uh, like the announcer before the champion walks in. You know what I'm saying? Nobody here is tough enough, is what he's saying. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. <laughs> Behold. You can just see, this is the entrance of Jesus into heaven. You can just see the, the master of ceremonies. That's what the angel was. He's the master of ceremonies saying, He's here! <laughs> He's back! <laughs> the one who's obeyed every command, the Son, is back! He's here! He's walking in the room! That's what he did. It was a big setup for Jesus. But the elder's wise to the whole thing. You know, he's like, weep not. Because the, the, <laughs> the apostle's broken up right now because there's nobody worthy. Behold, the lion. Say, lion. What does a lion do? Right. <laughs> a lion roars, right? He's the lion of the tribe of what? What is Judah? Praise. <laughs> he is the lion of the tribe of praise. Hallelujah! Oops, I'm yelling. Hallelujah. You know, that's what it takes sometimes. It's for us to praise God. And that was the song that was given to me years ago. It was a warfare song 
of praise against the gates of hell. That was my Wednesday night command of the loving kindness of God. Praise God. The line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he hath prevailed to open the book. You got a future. Your future, the book can be opened on your future. This command is for you. The loving kindness of God, its command is for you. Has prevailed to open the book and to loosen the seven seals thereof. Praise God. And... Pastor Tony got a major victory. And Pastor David got the job. <laughs> and whatever you need. Because as the psalmist says, O oh God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember your loving kindness. Hallelujah, your tender mercy toward me, O God, that you have commanded the blessing for me. I want you to say that with me. O God, act like you mean it now. O God, you have commanded the blessing for me. Praise God. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. I don't know what your day has been like, but there's been a command also that God has says, yet, no matter what, I'll command my loving kindness in this day. And in the night, a song shall be with me to the God of my life. I love that because I uh, only got a certain amount of time, so I'm trying to get this out. I love that because I don't have to make this stuff up. God woos us. We didn't come to God on our own. He drew us. He loves us first. He loves you. And his song is out there for you. Praise God. He's wooing you with a love song. That's what he's doing. And that's why a prayer comes out of us. It's in response. We're not drumming up something. We're not trying to make it all happen. He's wooed us with his love and kindness towards us. And that's what brings a song or a prayer out of us to the God of our lives, not just us existing. Praise God. In fact, I come against just existing in the name of Jesus. When there's a song for us that'll come out of us like a prayer to the God of our lives. Hallelujah. Amen? Praise God. You get ministered to? Praise God. I tell you, I don't like to come up and say anything that is just, it has to be real to me. I have had to experience things. And I have experienced this. That's why I know it's real. And if I gave you the testimony, you would sit there and go, oh, you know, that's why I gave him your testimony, Pastor David, because it was like, it was a Wednesday night. And the word of the Lord of the command of the blessing of God came. And he's been walking in it now for 23 years. How big of a blessing was it? His future. Right? And it's a blessed job that's kept him all this time. And he's increased in it. Because it's the command of the Lord. Commanding the blessing. Remember he said, I'm cast down. My soul's cast down. Oh God, I will remember where you commanded the blessing. On the back part of your page is the same verse, but it's a different part that's being emphasized here. And in the last couple of minutes, we're going to talk about it. And just for a little bit. This is really cool. Remember I said in the beginning how because he commands, we can command? And that, that may kind of throw you off there a little bit, but let me try to say it a different way. If we've got the commander with us and he's in us, 
and he loves us, guess what he's going to do through us? <laughs> if we're walking with the commander, and the commander says, you know what? Thank you for letting me be in your home <laughs> and dwell with you. I'm going to do some commanding right now. Praise God. You see, Jesus is victorious, and when you invite him in your heart, you just invited the winner inside of you. I didn't say he can't, he, how can I put this? He loves those who are losers. He loves those who are weak because he loves to restore them to a place of not being destroyed. Hallelujah. And becoming a winner. Hallelujah. Psalm 42, 8. A winner before God. <laughs> Yet the Lord will command his loving timeless in the daytime. And in the night, his song shall be with me. Now I want you to look at this. He's starting to command. This is the person who said, my heart is cast down. They're saying, but I know God has given a command for me of loving kindness. And I'm, I'm now commanding. Watch this. In the night, his song shall be with me. That's a command. I'll show it to you. The word shall be. Now look at this. It's kind of cool the way this breaks down. And it's on your paper. And I'm just going to say certain parts of it. Shall be. It means to associate. It means to overshadow. Doesn't the love of God cover our sins? Don't we hide under the shadow of his wings? He overshadows us. Doesn't love cover a multitude of sin? It says by huddling together. Doesn't he want to be that close to you? <laughs> He wants you to huddle by huddling together. Now look at this next part. This is cool. <laughs> Shall be with me. Look at the word with me. I put it in bold. With us. God with us. Emmanuel. God with us. One of the names of God. God is with us. Emmanuel. In that little part that says, his song shall be with me. Emmanuel is with me. Who is with us? God himself. Praise God. You see why it started turning into a command through him? His, not, his song shall be with me. This will happen. I'm going to end it with this. One of the most awesome things that I remember happening to me when I first became a Christian and obeying God and giving my heart to Jesus, which I invite you to do right now, hallelujah, you can say, Jesus, forgive me. I want to obey you. I want your song. I want your command. I'm going to obey your commands, not my own. And I know you'll have a blessing for me. And I'll have a brand new song and a prayer to you and a brand new life in Jesus' name. Praise God. Receive that and believe that. I remember one of the first things God told me to do as I'm saying, Jesus, I love you. You've covered my heart. I'll do whatever you want, whatever you want me to do. And I was just envisioning God's having me as a 16-year-old young man walk across the street and talk to my neighbor about Jesus. I was going to do it. I was up for it. That's what I wanted it to be. Guess what he told me to do? And you know this is God commanding. He said, I didn't have to leave my house. I had just had to walk to another room in my house. And I had to look at a certain person. And the Lord said, you go tell that person you love. That was his command. I would rather have walked across the street <laughs> to a total stranger than to tell that person but I told him, I will now obey you. And he's trying to bless me. You know, to this day, all these years later, God brought me back to that again. The same person, too. <laughs> you need to let that person know you love them. See, God is a father. And he knows what we need. He knows what's good for us. So that was a command I, I had to obey there, was telling that person, I love them. And then I started realizing something else happening in my life. 
I obeyed a command, and I started having the ability to command. I started commanding the devil. The same one that oppressed me, I had authority over him. And I knew I was supposed to command certain things. And when the Lord gave me that song, it was a command. Lift up your head, O gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors. Those are the gates of hell. And the king of glory shall come in. I didn't say I'm coming in. I said the king of glory is coming in. I just happen to be with him. We're dwelling together, you see. We are huddling. <laughs> I will come in with him. This promise is for me because it's in God's word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father God, I thank you for your word this day. I thank you for your command of loving kindness to us. And we bless you. Praise God. Thank you for joining us. And we dismiss by showing our loving kindness back. So if you guys don't mind standing with me, please. Thank you. And don't go away, because I want to pray something too. But you, let's blow our kiss to the Lord. And may the Holy Spirit haunt you with his peace. In Jesus' name. Amen.